Come on, my time with everyone. I have very bad I uh, recently came across a very, very good interview with Isaac Asimov, taken, I believe, the early 80s. And it is incredible. And there are so many things in it that I would like to talk about. Um, I have been completely incapable of editing, distilling this video down anymore because the, the whole interview is just so good. And it touches on so many topics that are so interesting. Um, so what I'm doing right here is I'm going to pick a chunk of it that I thought really, really leapt out at me. It was really, really good. And I'm going to talk a little bit about it after I, after I show the clip. The clip is about four minutes long. It's incredibly relevant to education. It's incredibly relevant to the way that our economy is changing today. Um, and uh, Isaac Asimov is a fucking man. Enjoy. Can we have a revolution in learning? Yes, I think not only we can, but I think we're going to have to. Uh, as computers take over, more and more of the work that human beings shouldn't be doing in the first place because it doesn't utilize their brain, it stultifies and bores them to death. Uh, there's going to be nothing left for human beings to do but the more creative types of endeavor. And the only way we can indulge in the more creative types of endeavor is to have brains that aim at that from the start. You can't take a human being and put him to work at a job that underuses the brain and keep him working at it for decades and decades and then say, well, that job isn't there, go do something more creative. You have beaten the creativity out of him. But if from the start children are educated into appreciating their own creativity, then probably we can, almost all of us, be creative. Just as in the old days very few people could read and write, literacy was a very novel sort of thing and you felt that most people just didn't have it in them but when you indulged in mass education it turned out that most people could be taught to read and write in the same way <clears throat> if instead of having mass education as we now have must have with a curriculum once we have outlets computer outlets in every home each of them hooked up to enormous libraries where anyone can ask any question and be given answers, be given reference material, be something you're interested in knowing. From an early age, however silly it might seem to someone else, that's what you're interested in. And you ask, and you can find out, and you can follow it up. And you can do it in your own home, in your, at your own speed, in your own direction, in your own time. Then everyone will enjoy learning. Nowadays, what people call learning is forced on you, and everyone is forced to learn the same thing on the same day at the same speed in class. And everyone is different. For some, it goes too fast, for some, too slow, for some, in the wrong direction. But give them a chance, in addition to school, I don't say we abolish school, but in addition to school, to follow up their own bent from the start. Well, I love the, I love the vision, but what about... Uh... What about the argument that machines, computers, dehumanize learning? Well, as a matter of fact, it's just the reverse. Uh, it seems to me that it's through this machine that for the first time we'll be able to have a one-to-one -one relationship between information source and information consumer, what so do you mean? to speak. Well, in the old days, in the old days you used to have tutors for children. A person who could afford it would hire a pedagogue a tutor, and he would teach the children, and if he knew his job, he could adapt his teaching to the tastes and abilities of the students, you see. But how many people could afford to hire a pedagogue? Most children went uneducated. Then we reached the point where it was absolutely necessary to educate everybody. But the only way we could do it is to have one teacher for a great many of students, and in order to organize the situation properly, we gave them a curriculum to teach from. So how many teachers are good at this too? Like in everything else, the number of teachers is far greater than the number of good teachers. So we, we either have a one-to-one -one relationship for the very few or a one-to-many relationship for the many. Now 
there's a possibility of a one-to-one -one relationship for the many. Everyone can have a teacher in the form of access to the gathered knowledge of the human species. Later on in this video, Isaac Asimov actually goes on to state that one of the areas he's not interested in is in economics, which is which is my area of interest and kind of surprising considering how he starts off the talk because um, what he says is of incredible relevance to economics. We're losing lots and lots of jobs to um, automation. We're losing lots and lots of jobs. We have lost lots of jobs and we're going to lose a lot more to um, computers, to robots. And that's the way it should be, is the hard thing to try and convince people of. Because any job that a computer or a robot can do is not necessarily a job that a human being should be doing. Uh, and and people, people tend to react with a lot of fear uh, when they think about a robot taking away their manufacturing job or their serving job or something along those lines. But these are things that human beings, they don't use us in the way that we should be used, in the ways that are really creative, in the ways that really take advantage of the um, huge benefits of the strange, fuzzy logic system that we can use in our ability to understand other human beings. They don't use those things. And so I think what he's talking about as far as teaching people to be creative from the beginning so they have the ability to, to adapt to new and changing scenarios later on in life regarding work or really anything else is incredibly important. Incredible. If you watch the video to the end, you probably noticed the incredible similarity between what Asimov was talking about and Wikipedia. We can all have access to an individual teacher in the form of the collected knowledge of the human species. And I debate with academics, teachers primarily, about the merits of Wikipedia at times. I've, I've not been a big collaborator. I've not contributed a lot to Wikipedia, but I use it a lot. And I used it a lot while I was in Afghanistan the last time, just for something to do. I just read random articles. I learned a lot doing it. And um, it brought on me a lot. And I really think that what he describes there has come true. Come true in that regard. Wikipedia and things like Wikipedia and uh, the open textbook effort that people have been making, these things are really interesting. And I do think we're going to get to a point where education is, and this is kind of happening with distance education, education is just so efficient that uh, it's almost free. And uh, the closer we get to that, the better the world's going to be. Thanks, guys. Adios. And I really recommend going to check out that whole interview. I'll post a link. Adios.